Yo, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm just going to be recapping and grading all the moves the Chicago Bulls made from the trade deadline yesterday. And I just wanted to give a huge shout out to all you guys for all the love on the channel and all the new subscribers that subscribed yesterday. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys are subscribed. Also leave a quick like on today's video. And let's just be honest, these past 24 hours have been pretty wild, I'd say. You know, I really did not even expect the Chicago Bulls to make one trade yesterday. Maybe a minor one, if anything. But I did not expect the Bulls to make three trades, and especially a huge trade trading for an NBA All-Star. So let's just jump right into it. You know, yesterday, the Chicago Bulls traded for Nikola Vucevic. You know, he is an All-Star. He's been putting up great numbers this season. And let me just start off with the trade package. You know, the Chicago Bulls traded Wendell Carter Jr., I felt like starting off, you know, I'd rather trade Wendell than Laurie. I feel like Laurie has more value around the lead. He's more of a three-point shooter. I just feel like he fits with the Bulls better. I felt like Wendell just really didn't fit. He is a little undersized at center. I feel like he could have been a perfect small ball, small ball five in this league. So I'm still happy for him. I hope he does well in the league. The Magic fans have a really talented kid in him. You know, the talent's there. The physical tools are there. He's just too much inside his head and overthinks, and he's too hard on himself. And the Chicago Bulls also traded with Wendell Otto Porter Jr. You know, that's pretty much just a salary dump to match Vucevic's salary he's making. But either way, I'm happy to get at least something for his contract because Otto was definitely walking for nothing this offseason. And the Chicago Bulls also traded two first rounders for Nikola Vucevic. You know, I did see some fans that they were upset that we traded first round picks. And I understand that I was upset at first, I'd say two. But if you really think about it, look at the past three to four picks the Bulls had with draft picks. Even in like, they were all top 10 picks. And I'd say Wendell is a bench player. Lori might even be a bench player depending on who Billy Donovan starts. Kobe White, another bench player. You know, I'd rather trade those picks for an all-star that you know is going to put up great numbers and help this team win now. And it, this move not only helps the Bulls, it helps Zach Levine a lot. Nikola Vucevic is going to open up so many options on the offensive end. He's a very capable passer. I expect him to be throwing at least one lob to Zach Levine a game. Kind of what the Bulls did back in the day with like, I'd say, Paolo Gasol and Jimmy Butler when they bat cutted and then threw lobs. You know, either way, Nikola Vucevic is an all-star and the Bulls finally have two all-stars on this roster. The only thing that kind of bothers me with Nikola is he is already kind of up there in age. He is 30 years old, but no matter what, he's on a very solid contract for being an all-star. I saw Zach's only making, what, 18 to 20 million a year, and he's an all-star. And same with Nikola Vucevic, and I'm pretty sure for the next two years of Nikola's contract, he's making like 24 million, then 22. His year, or I'd say his salary per year goes down, so that's great, and he's already putting up great numbers. And another great thing is, yeah, I said he's getting up there in age, but his game really doesn't rely on like, like him being athletic so that's great as well he's more of just a great shooter great post game he's just very solid at everything he does and this season for the Orlando Magic in about 34 minutes a night he's putting up 25 points a game shooting 48% from the field which is great he's also shooting 41% from deep which is amazing as well and he's also averaging about 12 rebounds a game, and that's greatly going to help out the Bulls on the rebounding. You know, I feel like at times we just give up too many offensive rebounds, and I feel like he's just a tough player. You know, he's not the best like rim like rim protector. I'd say he's not going to block a bunch of shots, but he is. Uh, he's like quick on his feet. He knows how to. He just knows how to play the game, where to be, and he's a pretty solid pick and roll defender. And don't even get me started with I'd say him on the offensive end in the pick and roll with Zach Levine. That's going to be deadly. And he's also averaging about four assists a game. Game, a steal a game and almost a block a game I'm just very happy with this I, you know our tourist said he wants to turn this organization around they care more about winning they don't want to be in the lottery and you just love to hear and see that from our tourist he completely turned this whole team around at this trade deadline and I believe the Bulls won every trade they make. I'd give the Chicago Bulls an A for the trade deadline. The only way I feel like this trade deadline could have been even better is if they did trade for Lonzo Ball. But of course, the two teams couldn't come to an agreement. And I, I, I assume the Pelicans were just asking for too much for Lonzo when he's more than likely going to walk this offseason. 
and not only did the Bulls only get Nikola in that trade, they also got Al Farika Minu. You know, I feel like this is a very underrated or underrating part of the trade, I'd say. He's very solid as well. In about 22 minutes a night, he's putting up six points, shooting 40% from the field. He's not the best three point shooter, only shooting 23%. That's actually pretty bad. You know, he's pretty solid at rebounding. He's a very good defender. He's really lengthy. He is 6'9. He's just going to be a solid defensive player on this Bulls roster. He's a really good rebounder. You know, he's also averaging a steal a game and like a half a block a game he's just going to be solid for the bulls and help out our small forward position so i feel like this is very underrated so for that trade i'd honestly give the bulls an a i felt like it was just a steal you know wendell just didn't fit with us the second or the future first we can't really draft good talent at least with guard packs so i don't mind trading them for an all-star and then the chicago bulls traded for troy brown and mo wagner you know, this trade was very, I'd say, interesting. It kind of shocked me at first. They, the, both teams kind of just traded two young players that needed, like, a change of scenery. So I was down for this. You know, it does kind of suck trading Daniel Gafford. You know, I love Gafford. He was always blocking shots, dunking on people. But he always got into foul trouble, and I just felt like he was never in the right position at this, like, when he was playing center. He's solid. He has a lot of potential, but I'm happy the Bulls made this move. We also traded Chandler Hutchinson with him. You know, Hutchinson just really hasn't fit with us. He's getting up there in age, and he's had a lot issues and injury problems so i don't mind trading them even though the bulls did trade mo wagner later i'm gonna get into that this troy brown kid is gonna be a stud i am happy with this and i know a lot of fans probably don't know who troy brown is but i feel like he is one of the most underrated i'd say trades that happened yesterday you know he is only 21 so the bulls are taking a chance on him he's kind of a project he is 6'6 he can play i'd say the shooting guard or small forward position even the four if we would if we like really wanted to go small you know back in 2018 he was the 15th overall draft pick and this season he really just hasn't gotten minutes due to the wizards drafting denny but in the regular season he only played about 14 minutes playing like or shooting putting up like four points shooting solid percentages nothing crazy and I know a lot of people might forgot it, forget about this, but Troy Brown Jr., when the Wizards were in the bubble, he was playing a lot more minutes, and he was playing very solid. You know, he had a couple almost triple doubles in the bubble. He was a very bright spot for the Wizards, who were eliminated from the bubble last year. But in the bubble, he was playing a lot of minutes, and in those minutes, he was putting up 17 points a game, also 7 rebounds and 5 assists a game. Like I said, he has a lot of tools. He has a lot of potential. I hope at least he comes off the bench and provides some decent minutes for the Bulls. He's a very good defender as well. He's not the best shooter, but he definitely can improve from that. But he is a really good defender. He has a lot of tools, and I feel like he'll help the Bulls off the bench as well. Much better than Chandler and Daniel, I'd say. And the Chicago Bulls then made one final trade yesterday. You know, I'd give that last trade, I'd say maybe a B, B plus. It just depends how Troy Brown Jr. is. I feel like he has a lot of tools, a lot of potential. He, he can help out the Bulls defense, rebounding and scoring if he just gets minutes. And then for the final trade yesterday, the, and the Bulls traded for Javante Green and Daniel Dice. You know, I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about Javante Green. He is 27. He just really hasn't played in the league much. I feel like he'll just be a backup and he really won't play unless the Bulls are blowing a team out. But either way, the big name in this trade is Daniel Dice. You know, he is a very solid backups power forward or center. I'd say he was playing the center position for the Boston Celtics. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not sure why the Celtics traded him. I feel like he's just a solid starter or backup in this league. He is 28 years old. He's 6'8". He brings a lot of toughness to the Bulls. And I feel like the Bulls have been missing that tough player, especially in the playoffs. You know, he's going to get those tough rebounds. He's going to be trying to fight other t or opponents, I'd say. He's just going to be a guy. Like, he looks tough as nails. He's just going to be a very solid addition to this team. And for the Boston Celtics, he played 25 minutes a night. He put up 10 points, shooting 55% from the field, also about 35% from deep. He can just guard every position. He's a solid scorer. He's just solid at everything he does. He also averaged two assists, about a steal, and about a block a game. He's just going to bring some toughness to the Bulls if he's starting or coming off the bench. I expect him to come off the bench. I'm really happy with this. I feel like this is an underrated trade as well. Our Taurus and the Chicago Bulls just won the NBA trade deadline. I give the Bulls an A on all these trades and all these. I, of course, a few of them are like, you know, chances like Troy Brown Jr., Daniel Theis is solid, Nikola Vucevic, Alfred Camino. They're definitely just going to step right into the Bulls lineup and off the bench and just help us contend for a playoff shot. Like I said, I'd give the Bulls an A just for all these trades. They're all win now moves to help out the Bulls team currently and Zach Levine in the future. I just believe our Taurus took over the trade deadline, flipped half this roster, and won every trade. I'm really excited for the Bulls next game. 
Definitely leave any comments or questions about any of these trades the Bulls made and grading all these moves as well. You know, like I said, I'd grade in an A, maybe an A plus if the Bulls could have got Lonzo, but I understand we'll have to wait till the offseason. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good one.